Hello everyone, Raza here. In this video, I will cover the latest features and functions for Canvas Power Apps. One of my passions is to frequently check and be on the lookout for new features. I cover around seven new features released in the last few months. So let's check it out in action. The first new feature is support for SharePoint image type columns. SharePoint lists now have a new column type called image, which allows us to store an image related to the list item. You can now create a power app and see the images from that image column. You can also choose from the full version of the image or various thumbnail sizes, small, medium, and large. In this screen, I have a gallery control, the data source for which is that SharePoint list. And as part of this gallery, I have this image column. The image property is set to this item dot, the name of my image column in SharePoint, which is device photo. So this will plug in the picture of the device. If I plug in a dot right after that, I have the option to pick either the full size of the image or I can pick from the different thumbnail sizes. In this scenario, in my gallery, I'll pick the medium size and it will go ahead and render the images. I also have a form control on the screen that is connected with this gallery control. And one of the data cards of my form control is the device photo column. The only control type that is supported for the image type column for now is viewing the image. That means one of the current limitations of this image type column is that it is read only with respect to power apps. The next new feature is known as string interpolation. Most modern programming languages have the ability to embed expressions within a string and now power effects also has that capability. This new feature is called string interpolation and it follows the same syntax as C sharp. I have this gallery that is showcasing data from my SharePoint list. One of the label controls in this gallery is showcasing the properties of my SharePoint list item. Here I am showcasing the type of my asset. Character 10 basically is to put a new line in the text. Then I'm showcasing the manufacturer and then the model information. To combine all of this in a single text property of a label control, we have a couple of options. One is to use the ampersand symbol so I can concatenate all of this text together. Second option we have is to use the concatenate function wherein I can pass multiple parameters to it and it gives me the same desired output. Now we'll try and recreate the same formula using string interpolation, but let's begin with something simple to understand how this works. We got to put in the dollar symbol and then under double quotes, we can start writing our expressions. Welcome. That's my text. Here I want to enter some dynamic information, the name of the logged in user. For that, I will open and close the curly braces and right within this, I can start writing my functions. So user dot full name. This plugs in the current logged in users full name along with the hard coded text. Welcome. Let's try and recreate the concatenate formula by using string interpolation. So I will begin with type colon. Now I need the dynamic value of the type of the asset. So under the curly brace, this item, because I'm in the context of a gallery dot my column, which is asset type. It's a choice column. So I'll pick the value from it. Now I would like to place a new line character. So I'll use the function character 10. I will repeat that same function. I'll plug in manufacturer. I need its dynamic value. And then I plug in the value of the data coming from the model column. The format of my function here is a lot cleaner and is a lot easier to read. And the output of my string interpolation function is exactly the same as my concatenate string function. The next feature 
is known as Power Automate Pane. This feature makes it easier to add and work with Power Automate flows directly in our Canvas apps without ever leaving the studio experience. Let's go ahead and trigger a flow on selection of this button. In the left hand navigation, we now have this new option called Power Automate. If you do not see this option, head over to Settings, Upcoming Features, and make sure you have the Enable Power Automate pane turned on. With this, I can directly create my flow from the Power Apps Studio experience itself. I'll select Create a new flow. This will launch a list of standard templates that I can select to create a flow, or I can click on Create from Blank to create a blank flow. And this will open the flow creation experience for me directly inside the context of Power Apps. For this use case, I will select an existing template. I will pick the template to send an approval and follow up via an email. I will give my flow a name and click Next. This flow has certain input parameters that it will expect. I will click Create Flow. These parameters will need to be passed from Power Apps to Flow. This will now go ahead and create my flow and also associate it with my Power App. If I would like to look at that flow or make modifications to that flow, head over to the three ellipses and click on Edit. This will launch the flow editing experience for me directly inside of Power Apps. The flow triggers from Power Apps, starts an approval process, expects a parameter, who the approver is, grabs the response of the approval, and based on the approval response, it will send either a successful approval email or a rejection approval email to an email address that we pass from Power Apps to Flow as a parameter. To call this flow, on selection of this button, I will straight away start typing the name of my flow, which is send sample approval flow. There's a run function to run the flow. This flow expects two parameters, approver to email who my approver is. In this case, I will hard code my approver to a specific user. I will send this to a user, Sarah, for approval. And once the approval response is received, who should receive the follow-up email? I will use the current logged in user who's running the Power App to receive that follow up email. Let's preview this app and click Call Flow from Power App. This now has gone ahead and triggered that approval process. Sarah receives an approval request email. This is coming from the user clicking on that button from Power Apps. Power Apps is calling Flow. Reza was the user who started the approval process. It's coming from Reza's context. Sarah can either approve or reject this, optionally can enter comments and submit her response. Once the approval response is logged, Reza receives the approval follow-up response. My request has been approved by Sarah and here are the comments that Sarah had entered. Now this Power Automate pane inside of Power Apps has a lot of other useful advantages. One of the key features is, if we make a change to the schema of the flow, let's say the flow expects another parameter, that change will be reflected immediately in the Power App itself. When I'm starting this approval action, I want to also give the user the ability to enter a message for the approver. So I will insert a text box. Here, I can enter a message and I would like to pass that as a parameter to my flow. To modify the flow, I can straight away go to the three ellipses here and click edit. For the start and approval action, for the details of the approval, here from dynamic content, I will click on see more and I will select the option ask in Power Apps. This will create another parameter that I would have to pass from Power Apps to Flow. If you observe the flow checker, it will even warn us that you may break your Power Apps triggered flows because I have made a change. However, with this new flow experience inside Power Apps, once I make my changes and click Save, it will save the changes of the flow. Then when I close this 
experience, it will automatically initiate a refresh of the connection. Power Apps will immediately reflect the update that was made in the flow. And my button here is throwing an error. And the error is that now this function call expects three arguments. So I need to send an additional parameter here. And that parameter would be the text that the user enters in this text box. Let's try this out. I've entered my message. I'll call my flow. Once the flow triggers, an approval request will be sent out to Sarah. Here is the new message that I passed from my Power App to Flow. The next feature is a new function called index. The idea of PowerFX is to have all its functions similar to Excel. Excel has this function called index and now Power Apps has this capability as well. The syntax is simple. Index of your table, your collection of data, and then you specify the index number. Previously, we had to write functions like last of first n, my table, and then the index number. Now we don't have to write these type of functions. I have a collection here. The collection has four values, apps, flows, bots, and dashboard. If I want to get the specific value of an item in this collection or table or array based on an index, my formula would be as follows. The function index, the name of my table or collection, in my case, it's called call power platform. All I have to do is specify the index. Indexes here begin from index one and not zero. So important to note that. If I want the first value index of one dot value, this will give me the first value inside this collection. The first value was apps. I can see that value in my label control. As I change the index, it will start changing the output value. And if the index that I've entered does not exist, it will not render any value. I have another collection here that I have placed in a data table. These are all the values in that collection. Here I have a number control where I can specify the index and it will give me the output value. Index number four, the text is index. So it gives me that value. If I want the value for search, that's index number six. It will give me that exact value from that collection. The next feature is another new function called rand between. Once again, an Excel function in Power Apps. Rand between, give the two numbers that you want a random number to be generated between. The low and high number are inclusive while it generates that random number. I have a button here. On select of this, it's setting a value. I'm using the rand between function. My low number is zero. My high number is 100. As I click on this button, it will set this value. I'm printing this value on a label control on my screen. So as I start selecting this, every time it will pick a random number between zero and 100. And as you can see, zero and 100 are inclusive. I have a slider control that slides between min and max values of zero and 100. And I have a label control here. The value that it will generate is a random number between zero and the value of the slider. So right now slider is at 100. As I start moving this, it will generate a random number between zero and the value of the slider. The next new feature is find and replace in Power Apps. Now there are many scenarios in which you want to search for text and even replace it inside formulas that you've plugged in. Here I have a button control on select of which I have a set of formulas that I'm executing. If I want to search for a specific text inside this formula bar experience, we now have this new option called find and replace. If I select this, it will open up an experience for me wherein I can enter the text that I would like to search. I've got two occurrences of the text column. I can go from one occurrence to the other and see where they are. I can match case for my search or I can match the whole word. This will search in the entire formula bar experience. You might also have scenarios wherein you only want to search in a specific section. So I can select that section and here I can say find and selection. You also have shortcut keys. 
control F, it will open the find experience of the formula bar. And I can quickly search for my text that I'm looking out for. To replace the text that I have found in my formula bar, I can select on this icon so it will toggle over to replace mode. From a shortcut standpoint, if I do control H, it will open find and replace. So it's found two occurrences of the text function. Maybe I want to change that with FX. I can replace it one by one or I can replace it all in one go. I'll select this and it's gone ahead and replaced the word function with the word FX in all of the occurrences that it had found. Many times we go across changing our collection names and variable names and we keep finding them throughout our formula bar. Now we can directly leverage find and replace. There is also another feature which allows us to search across the entire Power App. And that is available on the left hand side in the new search pane. If you do not see this search experience, you need to ensure that under settings, upcoming features, you have the search experience turned on. Here, I can search for my text and it will search across all the different components of my Power App. I have a collection here that's called call menu. It's also being leveraged on the app objects on start function. I have different screens. I am using it inside of components in my screen and so on and so forth. You can additionally even filter this down further. What I'm searching for, maybe I want to only search for it inside of collections. I can pick collection and it will only give me that result. I have several different categories to choose from and I can narrow my search options further. When it finds the results, if I select it, it will directly take me to that experience. So for collections, it will take me directly to the collection view. If I search for the text FX, in a couple of screens, I have labels, text function for which I have the text FX within them. If I select it, it will directly take me to that specific screen and highlight that specific control. And once I come here, in order for me to find it in the formula bar, I can quickly do a control F, search for FX and get to that text. The other occurrences that it has found, I just simply selected. These ones are running on select of this button. Once again, to search for it or even replace it if required, control H. I'll replace FX with the word function and I'll replace all occurrences. And a quick sneak peek to wrap it up. A new function that is most awaited is the parse JSON function. This will provide us a convenient way for directly working with a JSON object that we have in Power Apps. A classic use case, Power Apps calls flow. Flow sends back a collection of data, could return that data as a string in JSON format. We read that string, typecast it to JSON, and then we can parse it so we can get all the information out from that JSON object. And finally, the image column feature for SharePoint that I showcased earlier, which is currently read only, update capabilities are in the works. Once the update capabilities comes in, we can directly modify that image column information from Power Apps. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.